Steve. Uh, <laughs> oh, where's my mouse now? Or never mind, I got one right here. Okay. I'm not too I'm not too uh too uh inclined with this technology, but I hear you. What what's what's the the cab or the what is that? Yeah, cab. It stands for uh Chad, Aaron, and Brendan. They started a the, they started a clothing company here in Sask or Yorkton. Okay. And that's their that's all their initials. Okay. Pretty pretty styling. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> So I, I heard when you you went through the hub factor that you liked what you saw or what you experienced. Maybe you'd share a bit about what that was. Uh, I don't know. Just help me with the question that I asked. It actually, like uh, understanding and uh, debate, because I, I asked the question about uh, should I get into car sales? Okay. Because I want to get into car sales and eventually work with kids like twelve to twenty five. Okay they live live the rough lifestyle that need to get out need some help okay and what's the relationship with car sales on that is that just the way to make a living kind of while you do the other yeah things? just exactly exactly it's uh it's uh i like people i'm a charming guy <laughs> i can uh i can i can talk to people okay so wh where are you at kind of like your life let's say with your job or with like how close are you towards getting there like this well i got a few uh i got a few connects that i have to get a hold of in saskatoon for that child care work or the ch child uh, helping kids mm -hmm. but i'm not i'm not close at uh i i talked to a couple buddies that sell cars they told me just to go into the go into the uh go into the dealerships and ask to speak to the manager because they're always looking for car salesmen for sure and not to take the first offer also well, I think if you went in looking as styling as you are, they'd be, <laughs> who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my son's helped me with my look too. He's going to get, because he dresses very professional. Okay. So he's going to help me with my look too also, fitted clothes and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I can say that I, I haven't been that good in terms of the image. My own uh, a desire to say screw you to society has led me to a, a few looks that don't seem to fit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too bad that people look at you how you dress, but. Yeah, yeah, it, it certainly does help to sort of match the situation rather than just sometimes go with our style, you know, it depends. Yeah, on... exactly, exactly. And I'm prepared for that. Okay. Have you ever, have you ever written down values or goals? Uh, actually, Yes, I have. I've I've did, did my values. My biggest values are honesty and uh, truth, honesty and uh, loyalty. What else? Uh, Must be beauty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, love. So there, there has been time where you focus attention on sort of values and decided for yourself that sort of what was going to be your your code of honor in a sense. Well, I'm just I'm just kind of starting to get to that. I've never had value. Well, I have I've had values, but I never really had a goal or morals or nothing like that. Well. I'm sure you have morals one way or the other. I mean, we all have them. It's just whether other people agree with them or not. Yeah. Well, yeah, true. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> we all have our preferences, but it doesn't mean sometimes that they align with others. And I think morals in some way, there's supposed to be some societal morals, but if the morals of society don't really turn you on, then, you know, it's every man for himself, I think. Yeah. So what, what kind of... Uh, setup has Lori has your mom given you in terms of what this is or what this could be uh an hour a hundred dollars an hour job <laughs> uh <-huh>. aha <laughs> that's what yeah. i remember and how, how does that appeal to you does that that appeals to me good because the, the idea being that you know, I'm sort of demonstrating this as okay we're going to go through a session it's going to cost a hundred dollars but whatever i teach you you can then do the same thing with other people. So 
have each session with me, you're going to do something. There'll be a new map. There'll be an exercise or process. And then you have to decide for yourself, whatever I just took you through, could you take someone through the same process? Oh, okay. Right? So it's, it's basically imitation. And then you have to sort of go part of the, the process is you deciding that you're worth a hundred dollars an hour. There's a lot of people in their minds that they think they're only worth a certain amount because of that's what society has sort of gauged for them. But I'm thinking you can actually like, you can have 10 people pay you $10 an hour, you know, four people pay you 25, you can 10 people pay you 10 all in zoom. And it's easy in a sense that if you're, if whatever I'm passing on to you, you can pass on to someone else. And your, your basic sale is I'm going to teach you how to make a hundred an hour. You know, again, it's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> but in, through the process, you're going, it's going to take you a hundred dollars an hour because I'm proving my concept as I go along with this. So part of it is you just have to believe that you can do it, but you're already watching me do it with you. And even though it might've taken, let's say 25 years of work to create what I've created, I can pass it on in five minutes in a sense. It's like yeah. I've, I've made hundreds of maps and the map, one of the maps we're gonna do today, you know, again, is very simple, but it took that much time to figure out, holy cow, like this is something that exists. Here's the map for it. And here's a, a unique way to program it with values. And that's one of the things where with the value cards that you have a set of cards now that if you have you looked through those value cards? Uh, just a few, but not 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 too much. Okay, pick them up right now. Yeah, I got them. And turn them over and just just read each one out loud. This whole stack? Yeah. Commitment, faith, beauty, forgiveness, life, courage, inspiration, cooperation, imagination braveness, diversity, understanding, discovery, flexibility, globalization, humor, expansion, divinity, 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 fuck. <laughs> brilliance, resilience, unity, humility, intelligence, wildness, hope, accuracy, gratitude. I love that word, gratitude integrity happiness safety order sustainability compassion quantity passion leverage inclusion responsibility excellence authenticity i like that one too innovation joy kindness prudeness Honor, truth, relaxation, thrift, practical, pr practicality, organization, honesty, awareness, caring, charisma, freedom, tolerance, integ integration, generosity, ad adaptability, concentration, balance, habit, loyalty, Clarity, simplicity, quality, independence, respect, glamour, duty, eloquence, dullness, intimacy, conformity, imitation, chaos, profit, I like that one, pressure, detachment, privacy, mercy, Ruthlessness, stealth, purity, justice, in a, in, in initiative, consistency, accountability, goodness, enthusiasm, acceptance, equanimity, equanimity, clean, cleanliness is next to godliness, trust, and learning. So what do you think of that card set? Which all of them said? Yeah, like, I'm just saying like, what do you think of it as a whole? Like, like what Oh, they're all delightful words. They're all nice, kind words. 
Have you, have you ever seen like that set before kind of? Have you ever seen a no. grouping of words like that? No, not really. So, I mean, they're called values in some places. They're called virtues, right? They're they're to me they're the they're the real reason we're here. Is we're here to learn these words that you just said. And you like let's say let's say you could um, master them all. Let's say you were a master of each one of those. Like, oh shit. Like, who would you be as a human being? I'd be the greatest. You'd be like a Superman, right? Yeah, a superhero. <laughs> so you actually have all of those within you, but you may not have realized the value of them. Yeah, I understand. So it's it's like there's a there's an idea of where you place attention, energy flows. When it's it's like when you decided honesty or loyalty or truth were were values for you, that started to change your behavior. There's a little there's a the first there's a map I want you to draw if you can. Could you draw kind of like six six levels? Six levels. Six levels. Like six lines on the actually and have it like. Could you draw a teepee? Yeah. And try this, draw a teepee where you have five levels inside the teepee and then where the X goes at the top, that's the sixth level. Like that, Eliza. Yeah, and just extend the teepee parts up a little bit higher so you can draw a word in there. So now at the bottom, at the bottom of the teepee, uh, the first level, write in environment. Then the okay. next, then the next level, put behavior. Okay. Then the next level, level, put capabilities. Okay. Then the next level put uh, values. Okay, last one? Um, no, th there should be two more. Uh, then the next one is identity. And then at the place above the teepee, you can put, yeah. put vision. All right, cool. Can you show me that? Can you show just? I just want to make sure that you got that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, how much time or interest have you ever put, let's say, into mental models? None. So none. So this this type of thing is this is just very new for you completely. This is all new to me. Yeah, I'm I'm nervous. Actually, tell you the truth, I'm never nervous. Okay, you're never nervous, and you're nervous. Yeah. So what what are you nervous about? I'm just just not knowing some words or not knowing like what what my values are like i said okay well this it's like um like i i got really interested in it and spent all my time on it so i mean i'm sort of like an expert right in terms of of this kind of stuff and it's not it doesn't seem let's say a normal skill that's taught in school it's like like if you're looking at books and you see diagrams right what i've been looking at is how do all these diagrams fit to one another and so the mind has like a conceptual mind to it, which is more about abstract theory. And so that's very different from, let's say, the physical mind, which is more like around the senses. So the pattern mind, it just takes practice and it just takes, you know, you just have to start to put attention upon things. But what you're doing is you're teaching the mind to see through abstract models. So let's take a look at, at where you are right now, okay? In, in the visionary hub. So if you're looking through that model and you're looking through the environment, you're seeing basically everything physical around you, right? Like in yeah. the environment you're in, what you're seeing is the physical stuff. Now, if we go to the level of behavior and let's say you see your mom walking across the hall 
that's looking at the behavior level. And let's say Sylvie's in the other room and she's, she's typing something on the computer and Kaylee's going to get a coffee, right? You just do a quick scan, you see the environment of where everything is, and then you're looking at the behavior of everybody, okay? Yeah. Then if you go to the capability level, now let's say you're looking at, at Kaylee and you're going, wow, she's really good at making coffee, let's just say. And you're looking at Sylvia and, and she's on the computer and you just sort of notice, wow, she's, she's very organized, she's very good at this. What and, they're capable of. Yeah, and then you're looking at your mom and you're going, wow, you know, she's got this whole thing. She's, something's happening here. She, you know, she's such a capable, let's say, communicator or something, right? Yeah. So now you're seeing at the level of, and thinking at the level of capability. Now, if you go to the level of value and values, all those words that you just spoke are at the level of values. So now if you're looking at, let's say, practicality, you're seeing, you're thinking at the level of practicality, you might, um, again, look at your mom and go, wow, you know, she, she's always taking care of what needs to be taken care of in a very practical way. So that value of practicality, then have you can kind of see that she's capable in terms of being practical. But then when you look at behavior, you can go, you look at the actions she's taking through the lens of practicality. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's say she's being flexible. Let's say you're looking at the value of flexibility and you go, wow, you know, with my mom, sometimes, you know, she allows me to do this, allows me to do this. She's very flexible. She doesn't get dogmatic about things. So now you're seeing her and you're thinking about her again at the level of value. And so, what I learned a long time ago when I was trying to make behavioral changes, which is down here, right? That if you shift the values, the behavior changes become very easy. But if you're trying to always change at the behavioral level with your habits, it's a lot harder. So in order to develop, let's say these thinking skills, you wanna develop sort of new habits of how you see, because the idea is that these models like we perceive reality through these internal models that for the most part are unconscious in our mind. So we have all this kind of stuff in here based upon our, our experience and what we've learned and we're seeing and perceiving and interpreting things based upon unconscious patterns. And what we're doing is we're bringing in these models to into conscious patterns. So let's say all of a sudden you start valuing, let's say health. And you go, okay, I'm going to value health. That means now at the behavior level, you may start jogging, you may start eating better food, you may start doing healthy behaviors, but it's because you valued health. Okay, I, so you value your values and run down the line. There's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy of, of what's important to you. So a lot of times, let's say, when I was young and I, I did this exercise in a Tony Robbins book and he, and he said, write down your values and put them in a hierarchy. I'd never done this before. And my only value was basically fun that I could remember. All I wanted to do was, was have yeah. fun. And, I, 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 and I'd been trying to make all these big changes in health and I never, never could. I was just always, I was always just sort of on, on, a, on a rant. <laughs> um, and then I placed health above fun and I stopped drinking, stopped smoking pop, stopped sleeping with girls I didn't know, stopped doing all these things that let's say stopped in my mind. McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I had this and it all happened within a week. And I, and it was just yeah. this revelation around values of going, holy cow, man, there's something in the mind or there's something in, in humans that when you change the values or put attention upon them, you can change the behaviors in sort of like a, a magical way. So now if well, you- Oh yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Does because it? Because if you're living, if you're living, if you're living your value, then of course your behavior is gonna change and your environment will change as well because you won't be hanging out with those scummy people, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You'll see it, you'll, I mean, you just, again, you learn to see things differently. So then if you go up to the identity level, now let's say, um, 
you, that's where like you could be a salesperson. So now let's say you, you have an identity, you can have an identity as a son, you can have an identity as a father, you can have an identity as a brother, all these different sort of roles within a family, or you might have an identity as a, a DJ, or you might have an identity just as a friend. As a so, cop. So as a cop, so at the identity level, it's basically kind of like by lifestyle, by job, by, you know, it's all the roles in society. So then you look at, okay, like a cop is gonna have different values than let's say normal people. Yeah. And if you're looking at like a mayor or you're looking at, again, any identity, they start to form a value system. Like if I'm a professional hockey player, I'm gonna have a sort of a value system that matches a professional hockey player. And if I'm in the military, if I'm a soldier, I'm gonna have a different value system. If I'm a teacher, I'm gonna have a different value system. Yeah, to survive your surroundings, your life, yeah. Well, and something to match, like you have to sort of... Yeah, match. that's what I meant. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I, I'm not too good with my words, but... No, I, I think you are. Um, so then if you go above that to the vision, now you're looking at sort of the higher aspect of what you want to create. The sort of, you know, the, the vision becomes, you know, you may have a vision, okay, I want to be a salesperson and I want to be a, a, a motivator for, for young people. For, for youth and that's that's what you have encompassed within what you want to do so as an ident you know as an and I, like if you let's say want to become a good car car sales salesperson i might suggest go talk to somebody who is a gar, good car car salesman and ask them you yeah. know what are your values Get the inside scoop yeah what are their values what kind of capabilities do they have what kind of behaviors do they do this map is the beginning of you starting to formulate an internal thinking structure to go from unconscious to conscious because like the mind the way it works right we have these habits we grew up with these experiences and most of it is stored in our unconscious mind and that unconscious mind is driving our everything we don't know why we're doing something there's some pattern in there that's doing it but until you start to unlock the mechanism of how your mind works it's tough. So what we're doing is we're creating an ideal system. We're creating something that we, you go, I want to do this. I want to be this. And so you're beginning to design your future and starting with values first. Because if you look at that card set, you know, it's like, man, you know, imagine there's a lot of values in there. There's a lot of values. And let's say you could choose 20 of them. And for the rest of your life, you're looking to master them. Like you're mastering the value of love. You're mastering. I was thinking about going through going through one a day. <laughs> That's a great idea. I mean, there's I I I. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make your first cognitive map. And have you? What do you think? So you've got this map in front of you, right? Yeah, I got it right here. Now, what do you think of that map? What does it tell you? Sacred space, personal space. It, uh, it's just about about where you where you space yourself, where you put yourself. Like in a group space, a community space, personal space, one on one space. They're all different. They're all different settings, environments. Exactly. Perfect. They're all different environments. So me and you right now are in a one on one space, right? Yes. Yes. Any time that you talk with anybody one-on-one -on -one like this it's a one-on-one -on -one space right yeah now have you ever distinguished it as a one-on-one -on -one space before no never a one-on-one -on -one conversation maybe but not space now what does it do to you to kind of see that distinction to see this distinction between space and conversation well no kind of like they were sharing the space yeah i'm just thinking about um because lisa what happened for me is i sort of went holy cow i really like one-on-one -on -one. i love this right because it's just me and you we're going back and forth you get to talk i get to talk there isn't this kind of let's say the beginning of competition for talking as soon as you go into the group space right oh, yeah, okay you ever, you ever notice you go into a group space and all of a sudden you can't kind of yeah you're not the only you ought to shut your mouth for a minute keep quiet and listen yeah it's, it's, it's just very different. What happens is your identity is different 
my identity is different when I go into a group space from well, yeah, because there's only one other identity in the room with you when you're one on one space. Exactly. So we the idea is that we need different values in different spaces. We need to figure out which values work in which spaces. And so if you go to the community space now, and let's say you're walking around Yorkton and you know, you're, you're going in and out of the stores, you're, you're, the community space is like that larger space that we're all in together. Yeah. Sometimes you may meet someone, have a one-on-one -on -one space, but it's like when I'm out there in the public, it's very different from when I'm by myself in my personal space. Yeah, because nobody knows you. Your identity is obviously different, yeah. And so that's different than if you're in your group space, let's say with all your friends, or you're in yeah. a group space inside the uh, the auto place where you're selling cars, or the group space where you're hanging out with the kids, right? So the environment changes, and then it's kind of like, okay, well, which value is better to use? Because like I may use humor in the group space with the kids, but I may use uh, accountability in my group space at the car sales lot. Yeah, I got to learn a lot more values because tell you the truth, I don't even know if some things that are values, they're considered values because I've never thought about this stuff in, uh, all my life and I'm 40 years old. So this is all new to me, but it's very interesting. I love the way you live your life, like how you how you think about it. Well, wow, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's when you get to the point where you realize that you can design kind of you in a sense because then you're being the best you in every situation like you said group community and one-on-one -on -one. and even in a personal space you can be the best you to you exactly if you think about this ain't this the right value that you should be thinking about or that you want to do exactly that's cool. awesome okay so now we're going to do an experience where i'm going to teach you how to program values into spaces and you, it, it, it creates this kind of like, a, I, think, I think it's superpowers. It's, it's like the beginning of, of, of how to activate different things in your DNA that are- Is invincibility of value? <laughs> Just could, kidding. Uh, no, that might, I mean, again, you, you might bring that in. You could, I mean, almost anything could be a value in a sense. And if you're, that's almost trumping what I'm telling you. You're jumping to a higher level already. So. Yeah, no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> no, no, to me, you're teaching me something. They're going, that's a good one to use. Like, why not? You know, like, that'd be a nice one in my one-on-one -on -one space, uh, invincibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so now um, we're going to, everything that we do, there's, there's two choices in terms of you get to choose it or you get to divine it. So now, do you know much about divination? No, I don't know nothing about it. Okay. So divination is kind of like when you bring in the mystery of the universe, when you sort of, as opposed to choosing something, you randomly select it. So it's almost like, let's say I said right now, uh, go to the values card deck and choose one card, choose, choose one consciously. Look at one of those and go, okay, I'm going to choose that card. Intelligence. Okay, so you chose that. Now I'm going to say divine one card, shuffle the cards, don't look at them, and then pull a card out. Yeah, that's what I'm getting together here. A lot different than shuffling a normal deck of cards. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, eh? Yeah, and they're round, they roll everywhere. I know. But they, <laughs> they're not the best for shuffling. Okay, so I can pick one wherever I think? Yeah, like don't turn it over so you can't see it and then just pull one out. Okay, cooperation. Okay. So basically, those are the two methodologies. And I'll tell you that people love divining. They love not having to think and they love the, the, the mystery of what they're going to get. Okay, so now you can combine them. What we're going to do for this exercise, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. I want you to go through that values deck and consciously choose 20 of them. 20 of them face down, not no, looking face, at them? Face up and looking. And 
I want you to choose if you if you could master 20 of them, which ones would they be? Oh shit, I'm picking too, too many off the hop here. Well, there's so many good ones. I'm just going to put the kettle on. Yeah, I think I got more than 20. Okay. Holy shoot. Okay. You want to quickly read them out? I got respect, focus, trust, learning, humor, brilliance, humility, forgiveness, faith, beauty, inspiration, discovery, balance, loyalty, gratitude, Happiness, passion, authenticity, joy, honest, caring, truth, freedom, tolerance, and quality. <laughs> Pretty awesome, eh? Yeah, it is. It's, it's awesome. Okay, so now what you did is you took from the first set, you, you chose a grouping, okay? So that, that involved choice. Now... We're going to do something a little bit different on your map. There's a little box for it says intention at the bottom. Primary intention. Yeah. So your primary intention is the focus point is the reference point for creating, let's say the value system. Your intention is kind of like that seed 
the uh, the core of the atom. It's the main. Can your can your intention be too big to, or like like to be live the best life I want to live? That that can be your intention. I mean, that's a perfect one. Yeah. If if that if that's what feels right for you, then write that. But you could go bigger. You could go small. It could you it, again. Where the choice is anything you're designing. Can I throw a few things in there? Like be successful, live with my family, and stuff like that. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put some goals on too. Just try, try to keep a simple primary reference point first. We, we can add all that on as we go. Best life possible. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great intention. With a couple exclamation points. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now the idea is that when you're doing divination, is you hold that intention in mind because that's like having a container. That's like having the, you just programmed a room and that's what is gonna happen inside of that room. That's your intention. So it's basically you're, you're programming your internal mental space, okay? So now shuffle the cards, the ones that you picked, the 20 cards that you picked. Well, the 20 cards I picked, I got them all lined up. I wanted to take a picture of them actually. But I can do that after. So now what we're going to do is we're going to program the five spaces with a value each. Okay, I got them shuffled. Okay, so you got them shuffled. Don't turn them over yet. Shuffle nope. them. Hold the intention in your mind as you're shuffling. That's kind of like creating the... The magic of the field and yeah. then put down a value on top of each one of the spaces but don't turn it over yet oh shit okay so just on any space yeah like the five like put one on personal yeah. space one on one on one space okay so long I'm show. Oh. Okay, I got five down. Okay, so uh, let's go through it with a big drum roll. What do you got at the personal space? Which one's the personal space on the right, right? Oh no, top right. Top, yeah, top right. Happiness. Happiness at the personal space. Okay, sounds pretty good to me. Okay, at the one-on-one space. Can you show on I'm writing happiness in this space? Yeah. Because okay. I can write on his map, right? Yeah, yeah, and we can okay, make one it on one. afterwards. One-on-one -on -one space is freedom. Freedom. Okay. Now, do you see the value? Do you see that green conduit? That's, yeah. That's where you write the value, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it now. Freedom. How does that feel? Feels great. Feels okay. great. Okay. At the group space? At the group space is, oh, yeah. Okay. I see it now. Top left. Brilliance. Ho. Oh. How's that one? That's 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 amazing too. That's what I'd like. That's what I like. And at community space? Inspiration. <laughs> Yo. And finally in the middle. Wow, this is the big drum roll. Give me one. Forgiveness. Oh. Okay. Okay, now Man, that's, that is so amazing to me because there's stuff in my life that I can't forgive myself for yet. I haven't learned to, I haven't been able to. It makes me want to cry. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. I'm going to, before, uh, before you, I'm going to give you an exercise to do okay by yourself. Like, don't do it now but regarding forgiveness. Okay. 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 This is what you do. You're lying in bed and you're, you're going to do two parts to a process. The first part of the process is you're going to look at everyone who has ever hurt you. And what you do is you imagine them and then you forgive them. You just go internally through that process of, of 
whatever they did, forgive them. And as soon as you feel you forgive them, you've gone through your internal work, then you go to the next person. You just keep doing it to everyone you've ever hurt. Then once you've done that. Who has ever hurt me? Yeah, who, who's ever hurt you. Anyone who you're feeling that internal resentment or hatred. Or and then everybody that I've ever hurt. Then you do everyone you've ever hurt. And you, and you say, you know, forget, and then you forgive yourself. Forgive myself? I forgive myself. Yeah. Like for each person that's in front of you, forgive yourself for hurting them. So does that mean making amends to anybody that on this list or no? It's the same. No, it's like, just for myself? No, no, it's, it's like when you're, when you're asking forgiveness from the people you've hurt. No, no. Okay. You're, you're forgiving the people who have hurt you. So you, you are amending that in, in a sense. And then the people you're hurt, you're hurt, you're forgiving yourself. So both of those are, are, are a mental type of amend. You can, you can just do okay. this without speaking yeah. to them and it will work. Because essentially right, cool. the process is for you to really release all the resentment that you have and release all the hurts that you've had. Because what we're good, what you want to do is retain the lesson, but you want to remove the pain. The pain is there to try to teach you. It's showing you what you still have to release. And I've, I've done that a couple of times in my life and it's, it's completely life changing. Like it's, you won't believe how good you feel. It'll be, it's like you're in a well right now. Okay. Yeah. And you've got these chains around you. And, and these chains keep you down in, in this well of resentment, right? We all have that. And then as soon as you do this exercise, it's like the chains are removed and you start to fly. And it's like, holy shit, man. Holy shit, man. <laughs> you know, because... I'm going to try it tonight. You're, 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 it's, it's, it will be an amazing experience. Okay, so now tell me... For, okay, just looking at that map... With the brilliance of the group space, happiness at the personal space, freedom at the one-on-one -on -one space, inspiration at the community space, forgiveness at the sacred space. What does like, what does that mean to you right now? How do you feel about that map? It feels it feels good because brilliance in a group. That's what I'd like to be. Inspiration from the whole community is what I've learned. Like I just came from living in a community and it was awesome. It was the greatest time of my life without my kids or my family. It was the greatest time of my life. And then personal space is happiness. Like I, I used to not be happy with myself, but now I am. And one-on-one -on -one space, freedom, freedom from the next person that I'm chatting with or freedom, freedom from them, not, not getting on me or me getting on them. It's also like freedom to be yourself, right? Yeah, freedom to be myself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's. Okay, now we're going to add another layer in. And I want you to write a goal in the next year in each of those circles. Relating to the circles? Yes. Yeah, so, like, like what I want a goal for my personal self? Exactly. Then, and what then goal? one on one space? Yeah. I can't think of one for a one-on-one -on -one space. Um, what about to, uh, to deepen all your friendships? Oh, I guess I could say relationships, yeah. 
or you could come up with, you know, I want five new friends in the next year. Oh yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. I'm just going to put relationships cause I have none except for with my family. Okay. Yeah. So I don't got no, and sacred space. You want me to put one there too? Yeah. Okay. So what do you got for each one? I got personal space, making money. One-on-one uh, -on -one space, free or uh, relationships. I got group space to teach others. And community space is get into a good, safe, sound community. And sacred space? Just be happy. Okay. Um, making money. How much money do you want to make? Well, a million dollars. <laughs> do you honestly want to make a million in the next year? Yes, I do. I've, all, I've always wanted to make a million dollars. Okay. Well, write that in. Because like with goals, sometimes like making money is very different from I'm making a million dollars. Like, let's say you took my work and then applied it to youth and then find a, and found a way to teach others in a massive way. Let's say 100,000 people online paid you $10 for some course you created. That's a million yeah. bucks, right? Yeah. So the, these days, if you come up with one thing and get the right marketing strategy online, you know, it, it's not too outside the belief, you know. Yeah, uh, everybody gets, yeah. Um, so, and then relationships, when you have relationships, it's good to get specific. Like, what do you mean relationships? Like what kind of goal? Do you want a to girlfriend and, a, and some friends? Okay. So, so write that down. You know, I want a girlfriend and let's say a, a new group of friends. Okay. And so to te teach others in terms of, um, do you want to teach, you know, sounds like you want to teach youth groups. Yeah, or I won't. Yeah, yeah, or I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind teaching stock stuff too, like the Fibonacci rules and stuff like that. Okay. Because uh, I'm catching on to that pretty goddamn quick. Okay. Um, do you want to teach online courses, offline courses? You want to? I have no idea. I haven't thought about it that deep. Like I just finished reading a Fibonacci trading book, okay. and I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it. Okay. But I want to also prove it that I can do it myself because I haven't even proven it to myself yet. Of course. Okay. So, so I mean, basically to teach, a, you want to be a teacher. Yeah. Sounds like. Well, not, not, not as, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I just rather teach others as my experience from my experiences. Okay. Okay. So teach others is fine. So this now is your roadmap for the next year. And what happens is it creates this sort of a, a bubble of you now going, is this in alignment? Like what you're going to do is what, be, what is in alignment with this and what isn't your mind is naturally going to start to assess things. All right. Situations. Okay, this is, people. this is awesome. This is awesome. I just wanted to say that. Sorry for interrupting you. That's okay. Um, now how, hard was that to do what we just not did. hard at all do you think it's you just focusing it? on it i could have never done this without without you though no but could you do it with someone else now you know how to do it yeah i'd have to get my my lingo down a little bit like yours like you know learn the words and stuff like that but but yeah can i give you a bit a bit of an exercise to do until yes. our next meeting i would like you to do what i did with you with two people And does, does it, it matter who it's to, or does it matter if it's somebody that's did it before? Or? Try not to do it with someone from the visionary hub. <laughs> okay. Try to see two people. And if you like to me, like, let's say you do three, four or five, like that would be sort of like bonus, like 
challenge Bonus marks. Is, yes, that would be like the more people you do this with, the more sort of like the it, it's like like if I told you to run two miles and you run five miles, you know, you didn't just do the minimum, you did more. And to me, yeah, that's like that's like that's like me with my planking. With my planking, I got 12 minutes. I was going to go. I'm going to go for 15 this weekend or this Thursday. OK, so it's, it's but just, I always because uh, to me, like if you want to make a million dollars, you know, you have to master this. You, you have to like you don't just go for the smaller things. You go for the bigger things. So that's just part of, let's say, me as a coach of going, OK, well, two would be great. Will I get a recording of this also. Yes. OK, OK, cool. No, I'll, you'll just I'll, send that to my email box. I will. So you, All right. so you can review it and see the process and then, you know, that's, that's how you learn. Right. Yeah. So it's 20 cards down the five. eh? Yeah. I mean, you could do 10 cards to five. The, the 20 number is, is arbitrary in a sense. Um, oh, okay. Some, yeah. I mean, you, you can actually skip that part and just have the people shuffle the cards and do it. I know Lori likes to do that in terms of she loves straight divination, but I, I like the, the part of the process where you're choosing because you're, you're, you're narrowing the options into what you actually want. Yeah. You narrowed it from a hundred to 20 or to 20. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too, but I picked out the, I picked out the ones that really stuck to me. So another, I'm going to give you another assignment. Um, the other assignment is I want you to write down seven lifetime goals. All right. And the, the, what the seven lifetime goals are is basically, let's say, imagine you've got this cone in front of you and in the cone are the designs. You just put the first layer of your, of your cone of what you just saw, the five communication spaces. You have an intention here and then you have these five spaces. So now depending upon which space you're in, those values are gonna get activated in a sense. But the long term, at the very end of your cone, at the end of your life, you're going to have your seven lifetime goals. And that's what you're moving into. So everything that I'm doing right now came about from writing down seven lifetime goals. And one of my seven lifetime goals was to transform the world's economic system from fear to love. And this is at a time when I, I knew everything. I knew nothing about any of this stuff. It was an, and it was an impossible goal. I think one of your goals should be impossible, something far beyond yeah. what you think you could do. Because what happens is the universe actually goes, okay, well, that's what you want to do. Here's, here's, here's the experiences and information you need to get to that goal. And because your mind has now set that goal, your mind now is acting as a filter going, okay, that fits, that doesn't fit, that fits, that doesn't fit, that fits, that doesn't fit. So you're creating this ideal vision in the future which then at some point you're moving into as opposed to you set no goals yep. and you're random i'm not scared no more about the future actually no like, like setting goals like this this is this is this is good what you do and so every other piece i've got map after map after map after map that are all like other pieces of the puzzle that as you add them together, you get more and more comprehension in regards to how your mind, your mind needs sort of a structure. You're giving your mind structure. All right, okay, well, yeah, I wish I had friends to share this with, but I don't have no friends, so I gotta go make some friends first. <laughs> well, that's the thing about, I mean, maybe Lori knows somebody, like I'm sure there's people that, uh, that mean- I wish I could add, I wish I could have had this where I just was. There's like 40 other people that I would have did this with in, in, in a day. Well, you, you could do a Zoom. You could do what I did. You don't have to do it face to face. You could do exactly what I'm doing and just call these people up in Zoom and do it. Yeah, okay, good idea. See, I'm not, I'm not thinking about technology. I, uh, I'm on Zoom with you and I didn't even think about it. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, okay. So we're coming to the end. That was it. That was a quick hour and... Uh... I can't wait till the next hour. 
look look how, look how much value that was so even when people going a hundred dollars an hour kind of thing it's like think about it you just created a plan for the rest of your life and for the next year brought in these higher values for a hundred dollars like to me that's a pretty good deal and that's a good investment that's a good and, investment yeah you can now use this to go make a hundred dollars with other people so that to me is very leveraged in terms of value right yeah. and when you really get that value that's when it's you become easy to represent it in terms of selling. So, but but everybody, every anybody I do this with will have to have these value cards, though, right? Or can they just pick their own values? Yeah. Another way of doing it, if you don't have this, is they just write down ten or twenty values on pieces of paper. And then, how do they select them? Though, do they just pick them? No. The, yeah, they turn the pieces the pieces over. Oh, okay. And just do it that way. So it works very simply that way too. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, awesome, Elijah. So as soon as you get those three things done, then we can book the next appointment. Do with two and then down seven goals. Yeah, the, the seven lifetime goals, the doing two people, and then your forgiveness exercise. Oh, yeah, I got the forgiveness exercise. I didn't think that. Yeah, okay, I got it right here. I got it right there. Okay. All right. All right, I'm like, excited to do that tonight. And I think, you know, something like with your mom and Sylvia, we did a weekly thing where it was a set time. But I also, I like the idea of going, you can go at the pace that you want. And also that you have to sort of finish this before we start again. So it means that you're accountable to me to actually complete. Yeah, accountability. That's a big thing for me. I was never accountable for nothing. Yeah. But you get you get far ahead when you are because it just creates the relationship between us, right? Where yeah, like I said, this is a perfect time in my life to bring you to me because I just came through going through accountability, humility, and stuff like that. All these other I didn't even figure that they were as values, tell you the truth. Mm. But but that was just my old way of thinking though. I I would memorize the map we just did as well as you could and make it make it uh, we can print out, get a color one. Uh, and make it look like make make it really neat, tidy, like maybe laminate it. You know, it, it's it's your mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, great idea, great suggestion. Okay, so unless you have more questions, that's that's it for today. No, I'm excited to go get started. Or just oh, could you uh, could you send me a colored one? I will. Okay, right on. Because then I'll just do it. Because I got a black and white one, but. I'll get it on a colored one. Okay. All right. Perfect. Elijah, you got my email? Yeah. Goodbye, champ. See you, sir. All right. All right goodbye.